Welcome. So this is a tutorial to practice crow, which is called Bakasana in Sanskrit. And it's a really cool arm balance, one of the easier to access and one of those that we see very frequent, frequently in vinyasa flows. So let's begin by coming into a squat. Malasana is called in Sanskrit. So open the feet, more or less hip width apart. So you really need to check with how your hips feel, where for your body, it feels comfortable to come into a squat. And then if that's comfortable, bring the palms together in front of the chest, broaden through the collarbone, push the knees out wide and reach the crown of the head up, lengthening your tailbone down. So your spine is super long and straight. And of course, some of us might need to keep their hands down if you feel like you don't have the capacity yet to fully be supported by your feet. Some of us might need to lift our heels and that's absolutely fine. If your heels are lifted, just feel that lengthening action in your calves. So once we find Malasana, I would love for you to slide your shoulders closer to your inner knees and then draw the knees in towards your shoulders, hug your shoulders with your knees to really feel that hugging in, that squeezing in action. And notice how this does to the rest of your body. So there's an inwards drawing towards your center. And once you find that, can you then lift your sitting bones as you're still hugging in towards your knees? So the inner knees drawing inwards towards the outer underarm, outer shoulder area. And so as you lift your sitting bones here, release the hands from prayer. Imagine as if you were going to place your hands down and then can you press your underarms, the outer shoulders towards your knees and the knees towards your underarms. And this builds so much heat. You can see I'm already here in crow without balancing on my hands. And I encourage you to try that and really feel that pressing knees to arms, arms to knees to feel that engagement that you need to have. So from here, lift your heels and I'm already heated up here. My thighs are burning, my quads are burning. Bring the hands down, leave a little bit of weight towards the hands and then come back. Okay, let's take a moment here. Bring the knees down. So maybe you have already felt a lot of heat building up from that action. We're going to go in again. One of the most, most common mistakes I see when practicing crow is people trying either to jump you're not going to be able to come into crow with jumping and that's something that comes kind of further along the way of this practice. Um, and another thing is that many people gaze downwards. So they come here and then they gaze downwards almost as if they want to look back and that's when you will most probably fall into your head. So let's come back to that little hugging inwards, knees to arms and arms to knees. Gaze forwards past your palms, lift your heels and bring the palms down. Now, very important, spread the fingers, claw the mat with your fingertips. So as if you're grabbing your mat, as if you're grabbing the floor, keep gazing forward, draw the elbows in. That's another thing. Make sure your elbows are not pointing out. They're hugging in forms parallel and leave a little bit of weight towards your hands and then come back a little bit of weight towards your hands and then come back and play around with that and keep drawing the knees as high into your upper arms as possible now eventually once the elbows come above the wrists you're going to feel that transition of weight from the feet to the hands. So let's try again. Hugging knees to underarms. Looking forward, place the hands down. 
Claw the mud with your fingertips, draw the elbows towards one another, forearms parallel. Shift a bit of weight forward. See if maybe one foot lifts or maybe both. Keep pushing the floor away, keep gazing forward, keep hugging the knees in. Draw the heels towards your sitting bones. And slowly release the feet down and come back to that squat. Well done. So let's take a little break. A good reminder here is that you need to remove the expectation to be able to practice that the first time you try. It's going to take a lot of trial and error for your body to learn how to coordinate in order to come into any arm balance in yoga. So what we're really doing each time we try is that we create new neural pathways. We plant those seeds. We get familiar with the feelings and the sensations in the physical body. Our brain is trying to figure things out. The body is trying to figure things out. All this coordination takes time and practice to be built. So every time you're trying, it's a step further to be able to come into pro and practice that. And let me tell you, there's a lot of joy when you do that, but there's no merit really. It's a fun exploration. So let it be playful, let it be messy, let it be however it is, but just keep trying again and again, and then it will be really nice for you to be able to incorporate it in your vinyasa flows. And there are some yoga flows where we come into crow, so you will be able to have fun with it. Okay, let's try one more time. So again, from your squat, plant the hands down, lift your sitting bones, glue your knees to the upper arms, press the upper arms to your knees, knees to upper arms, spread the fingertips, claw the mat, sorry, spread the fingers, claw the mat with your fingertips, lift your heels, gaze forward, then begin to shift a bit of weight, once the elbows come above the wrist, you're natural, naturally your feet will lift off the ground and you're going to fly. Keep active toes, keep the fingertips active, they push you forwards and back, drawing the elbows in, breathe. Beautiful, and let's come back down. That's it, well done. Keep practicing and let me know how you go. Thank you so much.